dear colleagues, dear colleagues, guests, let me declare our technical break number one over and let us continue our work by the order of the Academic Secretary of Petersburg University, Gnotov Alexander Valentinovich, dated the 7th of September, number 8525, May Panzer Konstantin Doctor of Political Science, Professor of the Department of Theory and History of Sciences, National Relations of Petersburg University, was appointed chairman of this dissertation council. The same order appointed members of the dissertation council. Let me introduce them to you. Markushina Natalia Yurivna, Doctor of Political Sciences, Professor of the Department of World Politics in Petersburg University. Hello. In the remote interactive access mode, the dissertation council meeting is attended by Zeleneva Irina Vladimirovna, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor of the Department of World Politics of St. Petersburg University. Irina Vladimirovna, do you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Fokin Vladimir Ivanovich, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor, Head of the Department of International Humanitarian Relations of St. Petersburg State University. Vladimir Ivanovich, can you see and hear us? Yes, thank you. Lebedeva Olga Vladimirovna, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor of the Department of Diplomacy, Moscow State Institute of International Relations, University, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. Olga Vladimirovna, can you see and hear us? Yes. Thank you. And Gregory John Simons, Doctor of Philology, Professor, Uppsala University, Sweden. Can you see and hear us? Greg, please say yes. yes. Applicant, Shur Elizabeth Alexandrovna. Also present at the meeting is the academic supervisor of the applicant, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Professor, Head of the Department of American Studies of St. Petersburg University, Tsvetkova Natalia Alexandrovna. In order to improve the quality of communication, I invite you, dear colleagues, working in the remote access mode, switch off your microphones, but please remember to turn them on when you're given the floor. Let me also inform you that our session is being recorded and broadcast live at St. Petersburg University website. The speeches are being simultaneously translated from Russian into English or from English into Russian. During the live broadcast of the Dissertation Council session, an email is currently displayed to which, during the meeting, all the listeners may send questions to the applicant or express their opinions related to the content of the thesis and the applicant's speech, the current scientific discussion, and thereby take part in the discussion. These questions shall be forwarded to me by the technical service, and I will voice them during the discussion. Questions should be directly related to the speech of the applicant and the content of her thesis. It's mandatory to indicate the full name, position, and place of employment of the author of the question. Questions unrelated to the scientific discussion, discussion of the thesis, the text and evaluation of the thesis itself, as well as anonymous questions, will not be presented. In accordance with the procedure for awarding the degree of Candidate of Sciences, the degree of Doctor of Sciences at St. Petersburg University, and Doctor of Sciences approved by the local regulations of St. Petersburg University, here enough to refer to as the order, the meeting of the Dissertation Council shall be considered competent if at least two-thirds of the approved members are present, uh, but not less than four persons. Our Dissertation Council consists of six persons. All six are present, including five members in the remote interactive mode. Audio-visual contact has been established with them. Thus, we have the quorum. I ask the employee of the Department of the Dissertation Council activity support department to issue a turnout list. Let me set forth the following procedure of today's session of the Council with total duration of approximately two hours. First, brief information of the Chairman about the applicant and the documents submitted by the applicant for the act, uh, uh, and their compliance with the established regulations answers to possible questions approximately five minutes. Second, a short report of the applicant reflecting uh, main research provisions, approximately 15 minutes. 
Three, questions to the applicant strictly on her report, no more than two minutes per question. Four, answers of the applicant, not more than five minutes for all. Five, speech of all members of the decision council in turn, with their assessment of the decision uh, research and uh, speech of the, as well as questions and suggestions to the applicant, approximately 10 minutes per speaker. Six, the chairman's speech with the, his assessment of the thesis, approximately 10 minutes. Seven, answers of the degree applicant to questions and comments of the members of the decision council, no more than 20 minutes. Eight, open discussion speeches at the request of persons attending with a brief summary of their positions and specific questions and suggestions to the applicant strictly on the theme of this study, not more than two minutes for each speaker. That we uh, ask everyone to register in the registration sheet and before speaking introduce uh, your full name, academic title, position and place of employment. Nine, presentation by the chairman of questions addressed to the applicant received during the discussion of a speech and the scientific discussion during the live broadcast of this session at St. Petersburg University website. Please note that written questions, the presentation of which takes more than two minutes, shall not be voiced. 10. Answers of the applicant, no more than two minutes per question. 11. Presentation of the uh, applicant's Supervisor, no more than uh, two minutes uh, in discussion of the members' of the decision council before the open vote of the results of the defense, during which the broadcast sound shall be turned off, approximately five minutes. 13. Open roll call voting. Counting vote, uh, votes by the chairman and followed by recording the results in the minutes of the meeting. 14. Making a decision on awarding or not awarding the degree. 15, the final word of the applicant, no more than two minutes. Dear colleagues, do you have any questions or objections to this procedure? If there are no objections, I will proceed to implementation of the session. First, remember to switch off your mobile phones. Dear colleagues, working in the remote access mode, please keep your phones on in case there's a technical emergency. Thank you for your understanding. So, let's start the meeting. The dissertation of Zetel is sure for the degree of candidate of historical sciences for the uh, specialty 567, History of International Relations and Foreign Policy on the theme Public Diplomacy of the USA in India, 2001-2016 was accepted for defense by order of the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University, dated the 19th of August 2021, number 8139-1. Shuri Elizabeth Alexandrovna wrote her thesis at St. Petersburg University in the status of a postgraduate student. Her supervisor is Doctor of Historical Sciences Professor, Head of the Department of American Studies of St. Petersburg University, Natalia Alexandrovna Tsvetkova. The number of publications of the applicant, which set forth the uh, main scientific results of the thesis according to the enclosed list, is three in peer reviewed uh, journals, a list approved by the Ministry of Education and Science, Russian Federation, three publications. All documents submitted by the applicant, according to the information received from the curator, comply with the requirements established at Spirit University and are stored in the applicant's attestation file. A copy is available from the officer of the Station Council Activity Support Department, who is currently present at the meeting. Before I give the floor to the applicant, I have a question to the members of the council. Dear council members, do you have any general question? And is it necessary to uh, discuss the entire list of documents submitted by the applicant? No questions? In that case, dear Elizabeth Alexandrovna, you have the floor. Dear chairman and council members, the theme of my top uh, research is dedicated to public diplomacy in, of the USA in India, 2001-2016 the logical continuation of my previous work and my master's thesis dedicated to public diplomacy. The relevance of the topic is determined by the fact that after the September 11 terrorist attacks, the U.S. leadership 
clearly recognized the need for fundamental reform of the system of alliance and partnership relations due to geopolitical, economic, and ideological factors. India immediately assumed the place of honor among potential friends. Nevertheless, the country continued to live by the precepts of um, Jawaharlal Nehru, the father of Indian nation. And for this reason, the U.S. leadership actively used public diplomacy to engage India in cooperation. The chronological scope continued under uh, Barack Obama. Uh, chronological scope of the study covers the period from 2001 to 2016. This period corresponds to the presence of George Bush Jr. and Barack Obama. Uh, January 2017, uh, we hardly considered this period as uh, this is the so-called political lull that had little impact on U.S. foreign policy in India or on public diplomacy in India. The, besides, in many cases, the choice, uh, uh, the reference made to the uh, earlier period, so in between pub new public diplomacy and new position, regardless uh, as compared with previous period. The methodological basis include uh, scientific methods. Here, I must say that each of these methods was uh, valuable in itself and took us, for example, the systematic analysis and allowed us uh, to uh, comparative analysis helped us to compare the two presidents, Barack Obama and George Bush. With the help of uh, a documental narratory analysis, we analyzed details of public the diplomacy and assessed details of uh, in the division into priorities and types of programs. Uh, this source base includes uh, various uh, that can be divided into several groups. These are statements, official uh, strategic documents of the White House, documents and materials of a foreign development agency, documents of the Department of State and its uh, the units, and separate uh, documents of Defense Ministry, reports, materials, intelligence community documents, international organization documents, legislative acts and documents of the state institutions of India, besides um, expert blogs and social media accounts and reports of non-governmental and non-commercial organizations. As for scientific novelty, this is the first attempt to study public diplomacy in India, and before, never before this uh, it has been explored. The distinct feature of this is because it pays attention to public diplomacy in this India through the prism of American uh, foreign uh, concepts and interests. For the first time, the uh, uh, wide scope of public diplomacy programs is explored. In general, the uh, work can be seen as a starting point to study public diplomacy in this country. The significant results uh, that have scientific novelty is the fact that for the first time I uh, studied the phenomenon of US public diplomacy in, the, in India, including from the different paradigms of international relations theory. The interest of the United States political establishment has been substantiated. The ambivalent nature of India's role in US public diplomacy has been established. On the one hand, the Republic is its recipient. On, on the other hand, it, it has been a partner and a conductor in various programs, both within and outside India. The cyclical nature of cooperation has been traced. The correlation between the dynamics of U.S.-India relations and U.S. public diplomacy in India has been revealed. We determined that the predominance of traditional programs in the arsenal of Washington's public diplomacy in the Republic of India is due to objective reasons. Proved subsidiary role of traditional diplomacy in relation to innovative projects, in particular US digital diplomacy in India, determined the target audience of US public diplomacy in that country. 
And for the first time, a wide body of sources on the topic of the study has been brought into scientific circulation. Uh, points put forward for defense. The classification of the thesis follows a deductive approach uh, from general works that provide an overview of the terminological diversity uh, and theoretical basis to single articles that provide an overview of individual U.S. public diplomacy projects in India. And between these two groups, uh, there are also two other groups. One exposes the mechanisms of U.S. public diplomacy system and its key instruments, and the next one compares U.S. and Indian public diplomacy and explores their mutual influence and in penetration. An analysis of three parad paradigms of international relations, neorealism, neoliberalism, and constructivism shows that neoliberal concept of soft power and smart power are most appropriate to describe United States public diplomacy, the Republic of India. However, this does not diminish the importance of realist and constructivist idea. Uh, Genuine interest in India has been influenced by a number of factors, such as India's democratic tradition, its unique location, proximity uh, to uh, Asia Pacific and the Greater Middle East, continuous struggle with uh, terrorism and extremism, and tense relations with China. Between 2001 and 2016, U.S. foreign policy described a finite path. The first terms of uh, George Bush Jr. and Barack Obama were cool relations with India. However, during the second uh, terms of both presidents, bilateral ties developed increasingly. The priority of areas of cooperation during this period were the economy, the military, and the nuclear spheres. By the time George Bush arrived to the White House, the educational dimension of U.S. public diplomacy in India was built in attracting talented young people to the U.S., the so-called brain drain. Gradually, a new public diplomacy began to unfold, which implied a different target audience and networking of programs with an emphasis of NGOs. We're talking about youth, again, uh, minor underprivileged minorities and women. However, the innovative methods were introduced into educational programs only under Obama due to the country's weak technological development. Great attention was paid to programs to promote literacy among the Indian population. There has also been initiatives which have targeted the residents of neighboring countries. The democratic direction of U.S. public diplomacy in India was especially popular with the administration of George Bush Jr. due to his desire to export democracy to foreign countries. Here, uh, the United States found a reliable partner in promoting the democratic values in India. Washington's interest uh, in democracy has faded under the next uh, White House uh, president, but the democratic component of the public diplomacy has only transformed rather than disappeared. Joint program uh, aimed uh, to at emancipation in South Asia, primarily India. American aid programs for the needy gained momentum because uh, of the need of technical and technological preparation of the Republic for the impact of American digital diplomacy. To this end, electrification projects in remote parts of the country have been included. In addition, development assistance and relief efforts during emergencies have helped improve the image of the U.S. in India. It's for this reason that attention has been given to the outreach. A significant player uh, in diplomacy was Pentagon. The information direction of U.S. public diplomacy in India was represented both by some traditional elements such as broadcasting, uh, educating journalists and uh, and innovative projects. I mean, uh, media, new style, new uh, media campaigns, TV and radio programs to the internet, including social networks. Due to the ethnic and cultural diversity of the country, broadcasting was linguistically based and conducted 
in Hindi before 2008, Urdu and Bengali. The development of digital diplomacy in the US and in India has been hampered by India's technological backwardness and illiteracy. Against this background, the implementation of digital diplomacy was limited. The period of implementation came to the end of the presidency of George Bush and during Barack Obama's tenure in the White House. Earlier time period is characterized by uh, isolated projects. The goals that have defined the main uh, points of digital diplomacy are building a, a movement of civil activists and equipping them with digital skills starting a dialogue with India, social media, and blogosphere users, posting TV broadcasts on the internet, but the latter is true about the information and digital realms. To summarize, it's necessary to say that public diplomacy of the US and India is linked to the overall nature of the US-India relations. The inability of the White House to engage India through concessions and other techniques led to the use of such an uh, instrument of foreign policy as public diplomacy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Elizaveta Alexandrovna. Dear colleagues, do you have any questions to the applicant? Natalia Yurivna, welcome. Please tell us, indeed, the theme has is new which is required for a study. But speaking of public diplomacy and joint projects, I w got especially interested in one part where you talk about democracy and promotion of female rights. That's an interesting subject because US and India, indeed, they have many joint projects in this sphere. So maybe you could give us uh, a, uh, some assessment of their roles of both parties in this process. Uh, are they real partners or does the US prevail uh, in, in choosing projects, for example? Well, in general, the US prevail, prevails and India is a junior partner. It's enough to mention uh, UN projects and the amount of financing uh, uh, in so this trend uh, still continues. So U.S. will still select. Now, India is ready and take part. So in India is not interested. They simply refuse. So this happens. So India has displayed some independence. Uh, this is part of the struggle between parties and inside the parliament because uh, a, cons a significant role is pl belongs in the strategy. The left parties, uh, they are more loyal to public diplomacy and U.S. strategy, and uh, the Modi party, of course, is more loyal. Thank you. This was my second question I wanted to ask, like what determines. Thank you for, your, for this interesting question. Thank you, dear colleagues. Is anybody else willing to ask something? Greg, you're welcome. Hi. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, one of the pro there seem to be two problems uh, which you illustrate in your thesis. One of these problems relates to how the, the US uh, engages. What is the nature of the relationship? What, what is the nature of the relationship between the US and other countries? And as is usually the case, the US seeks an asymmetric relationship, that it's not a partnership, but rather a hierarchy. And this, of course, is not going to be something accepted by India, especially considering um, it's a rising power and the US is a relatively declining power. Uh, I'd just like your comment on that, and related to this point, is that uh, these issues which the US is raising seem very Western liberal. Uh, these are quite symbolic virtue uh, 
reports relating to these ideological aspects, su such as women uh, and the rights of women. They used exactly the same thing in Afghanistan uh, before they abandoned Afghanistan. Uh, so are these points like uh, women's rights credible or even attractive when you have this Western liberal country which is trying to influence and persuade a non-Western, more conservative country? Thank you, Dr. Simons, for your interesting questions. As for your first question about the asymmetrical relations of U.S. with other states, here, of course, the U.S. pursues its own interests in India and engaging India in cooperation against China and uh, using India to fight terrorism and extremists. But speaking of George Bush the junior, I wouldn't say that uh, his relations were symmetrical. Still, George Bush the junior was the most pro-Indian president in history of the US. He was uh, uh, really interested in this cooperation and uh, he made lots of concessions. He was actually criticized even by his supporters for this approach. So speaking of, uh, in case of Obama, it was certainly asymmetrical, but in case of George Bush, the junior, it was partly asymmetrical, but uh, partly partnership, uh, at least from the point of methods U US used uh, in India, but not, of course, uh, uh, if we talk, and as for female rights and other uh, programs here. The main purpose of Washington, the main goal, was to destroy the traditional lifestyle of the Indian society and create a, a community of people loyal to uh, American values. And Washington decided to focus on women because as uh, quite well known that women, especially young women and girls, they are very susceptible to such influence. That is why they decided to go for female rights. It was simply necessary to produce new leaders who may I influence development of uh, future development of India. Hopefully I answered your questions. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, do we have more questions? <laughs> Dear colleagues, do we have more questions? No more, no further questions in that case. The next item of our program speeches of the dissertation council members with their assessment of the thesis and speeches uh, uh, of the attendees and uh, presentation of external reviews uh, before I give before we start uh, this part of our session I would like to ask you Elizabeth Alexandrovna how would you prefer to answer questions uh, in the end, or you would like? Would you prefer? Uh, I would prefer to answer uh, all the questions in the end because uh, some questions were similar, so it would be more convenient to group them together. Okay, thank you. Let's do it this way. Ext we received no external reviews. Uh, that is why uh, we will start presenting reviews of the dissertation council members and of the chairman, of course. First, I would like to give the floor to Irina Vladina Zelenova. Irina Vladimirovna, welcome. Thank you very much for giving the floor to me, Mr. Chairman and dear colleagues. I'd like to present my review. The thesis by Elizaveta Alexandrovna Schur outlines the modern trends in development of foreign policy of the U.S. and such an, a powerful tool as 
public diplomacy that can play an important role in establishing India as a main partner of the USA, the author has mastered the documentary basis of this study. Uh, the sources were divided in five groups in addition to the traditional sources. Uh, the author also explored mass media, blogs, and uh, which represent uh, rich scientific material. The thesis addresses several issues, analyzes public diplomacy of US soft uh, power. Uh, secondly, uh, the addresses the uh, an, uh, problem of analyzing sources and reduce new documents and documents published earlier. And thirdly, the theoretical issue, the author has summarized and analyzed various concepts and models of public diplomacy. Despite uh, obvious relevance of this theme, uh, no research in this area has been conducted before. A special place in the, is taken in, the, in Chapter 1, Public Diplomacy in the India, Theoretical Foundations and History, where author has uh, created a system of uh, literature on public diplomacy in USA and India. Studying this, uh, their conclusions are reliable and have high degree of scientific novelty. Elizabeth Alexandrovna believes that public diplomacy and digital diplomacy of the two countries have contributed to political processes and uh, to development of bilateral relations between the USA and India. The author not only explodes the public diplomacy in the USA, but also demonstrates activity aimed at penetration of culture and values. Uh, the author succeeded to uh, prove that there is uh, to analyze this instrument of foreign policy of the US. The theoretical part also looks well justified where the author offers some models to study public diplomacy in the US. The author has analyzed various concepts uh, made by the theoreticians, yet at the same time, they also have a number of critical remarks, and comments, or questions. So I have three questions. First, first of all, would it's necessary to describe in more detail the position of yes uh, in to the competition between India and China? The author uh, says in chapter two, paragraph two point two, on the increasing priority of Indian strategy of national security of the U.S. Yet, uh, a very few words is dedicated to this triangle: USA, China, India. Can we? Uh, admit that during the two presidencies, India was getting more attention from the U.S. Second, it would be useful to know and understand the attitude of Indians expert in the community to the soft power concept. Uh, what do Indians think about this concept? Are there any uh, critics? Thirdly, uh, it's not clear on the relation of types of projects in American public diplomacy in India projects in the sphere of education, IT, humanitarian, and digital spheres were uh, uh, priorities. Yet, what projects uh, were prioritized by George Bush and Barack Obama? Uh, can we conclude that other projects were priorities, or, for example, the information projects were more significant? These remarks do not affect the overall positive assessment of the thesis, which is an original study dedicated to a relevant theme. The thesis by Shur Elizabeth Alexandrovna on the theme Public Diplomacy of the U.S. in India 2001-2016 corresponds to the main requirements set by the order of the 1st of September 2017, 6821-1 on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University, and the applicant surely that Alexander deserves being awarded the degree of candidate of historical sciences, specialty 567, history of foreign relations and external poli foreign policy. Article 911 of the above mentioned that has not been violated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Irina Vladimirovna. Now I would like to give the floor to Natalia Yurivna Markushina. Dear colleagues, dear chairman, I will not dwell uh, on the merits of this thesis of uh, many works that I have read. It's one of the best works 
I came across because the topic indeed is highly relevant and interesting. Novelty is well explained by the author. A great number of sources she has studied and well, that also an important point because many documents has been introduced for the first time and the topic itself as the author has uh, justly said has not been uh, explored so it's always good to support a pioneer in this field so the work is a thesis is a success but i'd like to take a look at the results uh, where i uh, got maybe not uh, critical remarks but questions the approach to assessment of uh, efficiency american projects in the sphere of digital uh, diplomacy the author uh, pays attention to opinion of the experts and study of congress yet it's not uh, clear how uh, research methods can be used to analyze digital activity the second uh, remark is about chinese public diplomacy in india can th may the author confirm or uh, the uh, that china uh, is competing in the usa and finally, the thesis, uh, the author attempts to compare approaches of George Bush, the junior, and Barack Obama in relation to various soft power instruments in India. In conclusion, the author provides a brief uh, description of policy of the two administrations. However, uh, it's still unclear which was administration was more successful from the point of uh, achieving uh, this set goals. These questions don't affect the overall positive assessment of the thesis. The thesis by Suresh Alexander on the theme public diplomacy in India corresponds to the main requirements set by the order uh, on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821 1 on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Shurlis et Alexandrina, deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate historical sciences, specialty 567, history of international relations and foreign policy. Articles 911 of the above mentioned order has not been violated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Natalia Yurivna. Now I would like to give the floor to Vladimir Ivanovich Fokin. Welcome, Vladimir Ivanovich. Thank you for giving the floor to me. Dear colleagues, I would like to use the opportunity uh, to use the suggestion of our president and not to present my entire review because it has been posted at the university website and uh, everybody had a chance to uh, study it. I would like to pay attention only to some issues which uh, maybe the author has not fully explored. Though, of course, we all agree, we may all agree that uh, these are complex problems and can be properly addressed in a uh, candidate's thesis. So first of all, the object of the study, American-Indian relationship in itself uh, is uh, significant because these are such super powers, such great powers as the US and uh, the Republic of India, of course, they suddenly draw close attention and the understanding of their impact on development of contemporary foreign relations and the modern world is certainly immense. So the study of the, of the interactions is of special interest. As for public diplomacy of the US, in India, of course, the uh, there's uh, some general. I think there is some weakness in all common in all studies of public diplomacy. The attempt uh, of the state to promote its image abroad, how efficient they are. It's never explained how it's imprinted in the minds in the, uh, of the people and in the of the society as a whole. So I think here it would be interesting uh, to continue and this work and uh, identify such indicators of the impact 
because India uh, certainly is a complex a complex a very complex state with uh, billions of people various social groups various backgrounds uh, how uh, can as women of course that's a very important group especially girls in any society so it would be interesting to understand uh, how the US uh, is dealing with this complexity and uh, uh, so I think this is the first issue uh, of the thesis that I would like to discuss you to, to comment on well the second point which is inevitable is the problem uh, connected with the US and in particular the attention uh, US is getting US is paying to public diplomacy in my opinion here the author uh, identified the reasons not very well not it's not uh, not because of uh, the terrorist attack in September of course that's a, that was a, a critical point in history of the US which shaped the foreign policy but I think the reasons are actually deeper uh, in uh, many efforts. The U.S. is uh, paying so much attention to its, its public diplomacy uh, after because after collapse of disintegration of the Soviet Union since the end of the Cold War, I think it would be interesting to find out why the U.S. started paying so much attention to public diplomacy. That would mean why uh, today this information wars uh, become so fierce uh, you get a sense that the countries are uh, getting ready uh, ready to start uh, declare uh, wars on each other so here uh, it would it was necessary to explore these reasons in depth uh, and in, uh, I think that's one of the main reasons is uh, U.S. were not able to achieve its goal to become the world leader and control the world order and rebuild it, reshape it. So, uh, and there is a number of factors that the U.S. failed to become the only leader in the 21st century so for that it's necessary and one more questions connected with evaluation of the events of 2008 of course this topic mm, this topic was not the subject of this study but it seems to me that the conflict in August 2008 uh, between Georgia and Russia uh, was uh, we should understand that Russia has a much greater potential if we talk about the war between Georgia and Russia I think the consequences would be uh, more significant for Georgia so that's what point one and the the war between Georgia and Russia is, is humanitarian law and uh, the use of heavy weapons why this the why the conflict fo uh, centered focused on southern Ossetia so here it was necessary I think for the uh, to explore that and even more so in relations with India a state with such a rich culture an ancient culture 
connected with the terrorist attack, but they cannot Uh, maybe cannot affect India, so uh, maybe something has this is public diplomacy of the U.S. Uh, they set had the task to change the entire the uh, entire nature of the Indian culture, but maybe so that is why uh, limiting it to such a local conflict, however well-known and, uh, sig and significant, maybe is not a good thing. As for the content of the work itself, the author, as a practitioner, uh, appeared very convincing, quite efficient to me. I saw no provisions, uh, which I doubted, but the description of the study method the uh, uh, it seems to be uh, the author should have focused more on that of course uh, of the connection between theory and the research methods is deep and uh, multi-sided uh, and beyond that but any theory requires its tools needs its tools and here, the author only describes, but for example, the author uses the comparative chronological method and calls it a comparative, a comparative method. There is no historical comparative method. Uh, it's not about political studies which describe, uh, use the so-called historical methods of research. Of course, this method has no content. As, as a, by shifting, drifting towards, that would destroy validity, the scientific validity. And obviously here for relations the United States it, uh, they need methods that demonstrate their culture their culture and history this, so comparative analysis was needed here because the public the public diplomacy uh, is built on a culture on the culture of the Indian society and uh, so, uh, uh, such this important element should not be neglected in the public diplomacy in the U.S. in India. The civilization approach. Uh, the author says, is she's using the civilization approach to explore the programs. The civilization approach needs uh, a different context, national or global, to, uh, and f uh, to analyze a separate program. Vladimir, Vladimir Ivanovich, unfortunately, I have to interrupt you because each council member only has 10 minutes. Could you please uh, offer your conclude make a your conclude make a conclusion. Thank you. I beg your pardon for making it so long. But uh, there are the e thesis has some issue. As for the conclusion, I think the author the applicant certainly meets all the requirements, and the thesis uh, the uh, applicable to candidates thesis. Uh, in foreign policy, and she deserves to be awarded the degree of candidate of historical sciences in this specialty. Thank you, Vladimir Ivanovich. Now I would like to give the floor to Olga Vladimirovna Lebedeva. Thank you very much, dear Konstantin Arsenevich, dear colleagues. Let me briefly present my comments and my opinion uh, on this thesis. 
We know that uh, of late the um, ties between India and uh, the U.S. Uh, ha have increased, but to strengthen these ties, it's necessary to maintain not only the economic links, but also use the soft power instruments, especially today. And so it seems to me that uh, reading the thesis by Shuri Zaveta Alexandrovna on public diplomacy gives us uh, all the reasons to evaluate as a, it as a complex study dedicated to a number of relevant issues of uh, foreign policy of these two states. First of all, as for the relevance, the relevance is beyond any doubt because today uh, soft power projects, public diplomacy, digital diplomacy, they are playing as uh, an important role in foreign policy of any state. And the scientific novelty is in the, uh, in, uh, I have not found a single work even to a similar topic. And well, this is something very important. The work is written on the basis of a wide scope of official documents, the sources, which is very uh, important for a history of thesis in history. So when uh, identifying some uh, frame, his, uh, framework, uh, she's going to, she, she, she's showing uh, in how her uh, study will be designed. I think that uh, it's very wise that the author focused on the key period of development of the public diplomacy because the period of uh, George Bush and Barack Obama presidencies indeed the very uh, system of public diplomacy has been uh, reformed and and so it's the activity of the uh, American government in the sphere of education, humanitarian aid. Uh, the author focuses on digital diplomacy, which is highly relevant today, touches upon programs to create a p positive image and, and address special groups. Uh, yet, uh, I have some critical remarks which should be seen as suggestions for further study of this work, which hopefully the author will continue first. From the point of methodology, it's necessary to uh, which is, which uh, is most uh, most uh, West explains uh, public diplomacy of the U.S. in India. Of course, the key theories of foreign relations: realism, neorealism, and constructivism which uh, explain the role of public diplomacy differently, but it would be different which of these theories should be applied to this case. Second is, uh, is uh, should eff efficiency needs more discussion. This question is symmetrical to the question asked by Irina Vladimirovna. Can we say that U.S. Uh, has achieved its goal by using soft power. And finally, the author doesn't give enough attention to the position of the Indian society, to its attitude to uh, public diplomacy of the US. If the Indian society or maybe some population groups, uh, passive receivers, of, uh, were there any, or maybe any growth of inter-American uh, into Americanism, or maybe the image of the U.S. has improved because of these programs. And two, maybe not uh, critical uh, criti uh, remarks, but suggestions. Of course, the part uh, on women and promoting democracy, Elisaveta, I think you uh, are uh, very idealistic. I think it's uh, very politicized, this sphere. And secondly, uh, this is something Vladimir Ivanovich mentioned. Your work has uh, a mixed nature. So I think you should have focused on something else, either on the methodology, and then indeed uh, you would have used different, used different theories, or focus on history, and then, it, uh, then this source overview. And, uh, but 
These critical remarks do not affect the overall positive assessment of the thesis, which is an original study dedicated to a relevant problem. And the thesis by Elizabeth Alexander Nashur on public diplomacy of the US and India corresponds to the main requirements set by the order on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1. Uh, on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the applicant, Shuri Elizaveta Alexandrovna, deserves the award of the degree of candidate of historical sciences in the specialty 567, History of International Relations and Foreign Policy. Clause 9 and 11 of the aforementioned order has not been violated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olga Vladimirovna, for your review. Now I would like to give the floor to Dr. Simons. Okay, so, I mean, a lot of things have already been said. It is a very uh, novel <coughs> and contemporary and relevant theme. I mean, as has been stated, it, it, there's not a lot written on the, this particular aspect of public diplomacy. Also, the, the, the format structure and motivation for the thesis is clear <clears throat> and it, it makes sense why it has been uh, constructed and formatted in this particular way. Uh, it's blending international relations with communication studies and uh, it's, as has already been stated, including a vast array of different material and literature. So it, it is contributing something new uh, in, in terms of the case study. And um, perhaps what could have benefited uh, a little more would be at least, because if we're talking about the period 2001 to 16, to go a little more into this narrative which is even appearing in uh, western international relations of an evo evolving uh, global uh, order uh, because this would actually strengthen uh, your argumentation further uh, when going the, the goals and the uh, aims of the thesis are clear задачи диссертации ясны more or less clear. Um, but when we look at the evaluation and uh, considerations that come out, that they that there is a variation from what I see in the beginning of the thesis to what I see in the end. Uh, it's already been stated uh, by the last um, member of the dissertation council when she said that at stages you were a little bit idealistic. And this was certainly coming through with these points about the, the use of democracy and uh, women in, in, in this public diplomacy. I mean, the, the United States has a long history of supporting some of the most uh, oppressive and repressive regimes uh, in history. And so th this is rather uh, a necessity to dig in a little bit more deeply uh, and a bit more thoroughly, which you do towards the end, uh, not so much at the beginning. And for example, when you bring up uh, on page 329, this idea of anti-American misinformation, uh, this is problematic because it be becomes a little superficial. I mean, what, how is it misinformation and why is it anti-American? Because when you start using these labels, if someone or, uh, or some organization is critical of the United States for some of their policies or actions, it does not necessarily make them anti-American. It makes them critical, uh, which is quite okay, uh, as opposed to something that should be uh, avoided. And at stages, there seem to be 
conflation between measure of activity and measure of effect. Because if you do something, uh, an activity to influence or persuade the target audience, it may not have an effect. Uh, and this needs to be uh, clearly, the, the line clearly made between uh, activity, that measure of that activity and the measure of that effect. And looking at the, these other points, you do come across with ab absolutely something new and it was enjoyable to read it. Uh, the, the, if we say flaws are relatively minor. I mean, there are some other minor flaws such as, uh, and I think this is more pointing to uh, the quality of the translation rather than uh, necessarily something that uh, you have done. For example, uh, the misspelling of Evgeny Pashensev uh, as one of the authors that you quote. And also uh, one particular phrase that caught my eye um, on page 245 uh, when to quote, related to the use of nuclear weapons exclusively for peaceful purposes. Uh, nuclear weapons are generally not associated with peaceful purposes uh, or intent. So um, I'm, I'm not sure if this is something which has been mistranslated, but th these points are reasonably minor, but they do have an effect. But if I, if I uh, wrap it up, I mean, in summary, the, the thesis that covers a very understudied and under theorized uh, concept, practice, and also case study. And your work contributes to a greater understanding uh, of these different points, including from contemporary uh, cultural, geopolitical, technological, economic points of view. And I would end by saying that the basic requirements established by order 6821-1 uh, have um, by you, the candidate, Elizabeth Schur, you des has it, excuse me, <coughs> you deserve the award of candidate of historical sciences and speciality 5.6.7, history of international uh, relations and foreign policy. Clause 11 of the aforementioned order by the author of the thesis has not been broken. Thank you, Dr. Simons, very much for your review. Now, let me present my review as the chairman uh, to the thesis. I must say that I actually like the thesis very much. It's uh, uh, dedicated to a relevant topic. The author studies the mechanisms of public diplomacy of the U.S relation to India in the during the mention period. And unlike many other researchers, the author explores the uh, impact uh, uh, through such projects as propaganda, humanitarian projects, digital diplomacy, and educational projects. From the point of contribution this study makes to historiography, I must say that Elizaveta Alexandrovna identified uh, uh, key features of digital diplomacy of the USA that many other researchers have not done. She demonstrated peculiarities of uh, US impact on uh, Indian youth via social media. Uh, yet the thesis, of course, I wouldn't say it has any serious drawbacks, but leaves room for discussion, for uh, further research. For example, in my opinion, the thesis would be more complete if the author paid attention to uh, some studies in uh, propaganda and data diplomacy 
since this study is dedicated to early 2000. But what about strategic partnership between USA and India in data information protection, which is uh, uh, indirectly related to public, di di and speak, uh, public diplomacy? Speaking of discussion of digital diplomacy, there's a question of priority of use information uh, technology. How can the author characterize uh, the role of digital instruments in uh, public diplomacy where they prior prioritized or traditional format of public diplomacy prevailed during that period? These comments do not affect the overall positive uh, assessment of the thesis. The thesis, which is an original study dedicated to an important and relevant topic, and the scientific significance is beyond any doubt that the thesis by Shuri Tetekhsan on public diplomacy of the U.S. in India 2001-2016 corresponds to the main requirements set by the order on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821-1, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant Shuri is that Alexander not deserves being awarded the degree of candidate of his history. Specialty 567, History of, in, of Foreign Relations and uh, 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 Policy, uh, Articles 911 of the above mentioned order has not been violated. Now, Elizabeth Alexandrovna, we'd like to give the floor to you, and I would like to invite you to answer critical remarks. Uh, dear Council, dear Council members, thank you for the interesting. Uh, let me start with a question on. Uh, the reaction of the population to public diplomacy project. I should say that there's no documented data on the reactions of Indian government, but uh, in uh, according to our analysis uh, of debate in the Indian par uh, parliament, and uh, I should say that in general, the Indian government is positive to public about public diplomacy projects such as educational educational cooperation uh, I'm talking about joint projects to establish educational institutions uh, bringing American professors and experts and uh, aid diplomacy such as electricity projects for example besides uh, foreign policy of India, we should mention uh, projects aimed at neighboring states, uh, talking about democratic programs and female projects in Nepal, Burma, and Afghanistan. On the other hand, a number of programs uh, caused lots of resistance in India, especially uh, this disaster diplomacy, because India traditionally does not allow American uh, armed forces to its territory, uh, which uh, evokes various reasons. For example, Indian Air Force was dead against any joint projects, while the Indian uh, Navy was uh, more positive. And as for different uh, parties, here I should say that Left, leftist socialist parties were very negative about these projects, and Indian National Congress was also negative in general about this. Uh, though other parties were more uh, loyal about these uh, projects, and as for receivers, uh, uh, there was another question. Here, of course, everything depends on the environment to which the receive receivers belong. If we talk about remote areas, of course, they were passive receivers, while uh, civil activists who took part in the technical projects, they were real uh, uh, propellers for American values. As for the uh, NGOs and their reaction to public diplomacy in general, uh, they had uh, positive attitude. Uh, they uh, were positive about any aid, foreign aid, not only American. And as for the question on the events of 
the 11th of September uh, so is not the reason why U.S. started to pay attention. I absolutely agree. Uh, this event was not the reason. Of course, the reasons were there before the attack in 1990s and the growth uh, in uh, anti-American mood in the greater Middle East. But the terrorist attack became a catalyst which enabled, which pushed the U.S. to start uh, its launch, its public diplomacy and uh, focus its policy on India. Also, it should be mentioned that, uh, as I said in my thesis, that during his presidential campaign, George Bush paid attention to India as a potential partner. And in May 2001, uh, he also proposed uh, to uh, install uh, American uh, forces in India, but uh, only after the terrorist attacks, uh, full-fledged uh, the cooperation or rather cooperation attempts started and public diplomacy in India uh, as actually started as compared with the previous period. Now about the sources, indeed the classical uh, well, is uh, usually in narrative and action sources, but of course uh, to study this topic and to identify the mechanisms and uh, explain the role which separate institutions played in, sep in uh, public diplomacy because, for example, the Pentagon, uh, it has its own public diplomacy, especially in the sphere of disaster diplomacy. Here, it's necessary, uh, it was also necessary to identify some competition uh, between uh, the Department of State and uh, Defense Ministry, so I decided to abandon the traditional ap approach. Now, then there was a question about priority and the use of IT as traditional uh, programs prevailed uh, during this period. Certainly, the traditional pro projects prevailed, of course. And here, uh, there's a reason. They are, well, some, some, uh, uh, one reason is poverty, uh, where uh, most people in India cannot afford to buy modern uh, gadgets and illiteracy before 2014 the uh, content uh, of social media was mostly in Engl produced in English uh, most population in India do not speak sufficient English only residents of big cities and also sh uh, should I should mention weak infrastructure constant blackouts that cannot uh, uh, that got in the way of implementation of IT diplomacy IT uh, tools uh, there was a question about efficiency of public diplomacy in India from the point of uh, foreign policy goals. This is a complex question. First of all, I should say that uh, uh, experts in public diplomacy have not yet identified any criteria uh, to measure efficiency of public diplomacy. As for separate projects, normally uh, NGOs, international organizations, uh, their approach is based on the so-called theory of change. Uh, evaluation reports are published but many pro public diplomacy projects, they never published these reports. So the author had no chance to look at these reports and see how efficient these programs were. So these uh, NGOs, they uh, sent to the, uh, the, the, these reports uh, directly to their donors. So it was not possible to evaluate many programs. So as for if we talk about efficiency, we can uh, call about uh, Kunki and uh, Planet of Reading and uh, electricity projects. If we talk about in general about public diplomacy and its efficiency, uh, we have to decide which goals we have in mind. If we talk about the impact on well, the political scene, uh, for example, uh, pub some successful projects 
have never changed uh, the uh, relations between India and the U.S. during the first presidency of Barack Obama because the relations were mostly dependent on internal contradictions such as corruption, uh, complicated economic situation after due to the world economic crisis. But if we look at long-term goals at which the public diplomacy is aimed, such as uh, creation of uh, a group in the Indian society that would be loyal not only to American values, but to um, U the U.S. foreign policy. Uh, a group of a population of leaders who can uh, impact further development of the country. And from that point, I think these projects were certainly efficient in the given time period. There was a question about uh, priority projects. So here, I should say, of course, that uh, under George Bush, a prior, uh, a prioritized educational projects because uh, his administration believed that education will allow to build uh, civil society in India, increasing literacy. As for uh, Obama's presidency, uh, their prior his priority was female rights, uh, started by Hillary Clinton, uh, who lobbied this sphere. And uh, maybe I uh, was too idealistic about the female projects. Uh, I would say that these projects, uh, they look idealistic, but in general, the U.S. pursued uh, very pragmatic interests. Uh, they uh, wanted to uh, create new leaders uh, who would change the future, who'd shape the future of India. And the the, which theory explains public best explains public diplomacy of the U.S. in India? Of course, each theory ha explains uh, diplomacy in its own way, but conceptual uh, core here is a neoliberal concept of Joseph Nye as a smart f power and soft power, uh, which uh, allow us to talk about the public diplomacy which promoted American values and smart power focused on uh, digital diplomacy and combination of such tools as cooperation in nuclear sphere and soft methods of public diplomacy. As for the uh, realistic parad paradigm, here is necessary to pay attention uh, to it because uh, it enables us to look at public diplomacy as uh, from the point of American strategic interests and uh, of the U.S. and Pentagon. As for constructivism here also, it's necessary to uh, mention its significance because uh, the structuring of um, U.S.-Indian relations was based on a dialogue. Here we may talk about the economic dialogue, the uh, uh, energy discussions and uh, dialogues uh, on, in higher education and female rights again. And uh, various, in general, various projects also, uh, in, but of course the core will be the neoliberal concept. The question about the triangle between the U.S., India, and China uh, under George Bush uh, junior, certainly India was the priority. As for Obama, in 2009, priority uh, went to China. Obama tried uh, to partner with G2, but when these ideas uh, collapsed, India again became a priority, but when Modi came to power, uh, only but only then Modi came to power, India again. Uh, this question about Chinese public diplomacy in India and its competition with American public diplomacy, there are some facts that prove that there is indeed 
competition between public diplomacy in India and China in border regions uh, in uh, northeastern states of India. First of all, question about anti-American uh, false information. Here I was talking about false information uh, from uh, ultra-conservative circles. Uh, less critical approach. Uh, well, in the beginning, the author was less critical in the beginning of the work. So, in the beginning, the uh, author mostly focused on the analysis of plans of the U.S. and then proceeded to the analysis of specific projects on the basis of empirical data. And these projects do not always uh, met the needs of the Indian society. So that was our attempt at critical approach. Why <coughs> not so many documents used in the work, or not so many of international organizations. Indeed, the author limited, I limited myself to using documents only uh, from some international organizations. I could not use UNESCO declaration because traditionally U.S. relies on their national priorities when shaping their foreign policy and public diplomacy, uh, fully ignoring uh, the opposition. So, so that is why it was impossible to use uh, documents. Of, uh, and the question about uh, information protection, uh, data safety, indeed. In bilateral negotiations, uh, it was more of an apple of discord between the U.S. and India because Indian citizens and companies often violated uh, the intellectual property rights, and this caused lots of resistance in the U.S., especially under Obama, because Bush was quite loyal and uh, tolerant in to this. Uh, I believe I have answered all the questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Elizaveta Alexandrovna. Dear colleagues and uh, dear council members, are you all satisfied with Elizaveta Alexandrovna's answers? Yes, yes. Yuri Ivanovich. Olga Vladimirovna. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I am satisfied. Okay. Dear colleagues, next, uh, well, we, we are supposed to give the floor to any guests who are not members of the Decision Council. I can't see any guests. Uh, Nobody is willing to speak. Then, uh, next, uh, questions sent during this session of the Council online and uh, questions received during the live broadcast. Any questions? Uh, I have a question to the curator. We have not received any additional questions. Then I would like to give the floor to the academic supervisor, Natalia Alexandra Tsvetkova. Natalia Alexandra, please tell us about the applicant and her work. Dear Chairman, dear Council members, this discussion and answers to questions again uh, made me believe that Elizaveta Alexandrovna managed to uh, cope with the uh, extremely difficult task of dealing with public diplomacy. The study of public diplomacy creates a great number of challenges for a researcher. How to stay focused? So we have public diplomacy of the U.S., we have, in the, and then we have India. But then there is the next question, which Vladimir Ivanovich and Talyevna mentioned, indeed. How do we, uh, how do we uh, uh, deal with a reaction of the society, and immediately we lose focus of our study? So the, and as far as about reception. And one more question, which is extremely difficult, which Olga Vladimirovna mentioned, indeed, the methodology, how to stay within the historical method or move towards a multidisciplinary study that would combine theory of foreign relations, 
police, use some uh, methods of political science and social sciences and media studies. So here, this is the next point, which creates an, an additional challenge for the researcher. And this is something Irina Vladimirovna mentioned and Vladimir Ivanovich, it's efficiency. Uh, how to measure efficiency of the programs. We have some social methods. We can also use big data analysis or media studies, but indeed the American government itself, uh, as I keep repeating, they have not produced their own methods to assess their own public diplomacy is indeed is a state issue and uh, for is also a scientific problem for us and another challenge uh, which many of you said is about uh, how to measure political uh, how to maybe how to measure public diplomacy should it be measured by uh, short term political objectives such as impact on opposition and uh, destabilizing the uh, or from the point of humanitarian policy this is another problem and we could continue this i could continue with this list and i think that elizabeth alexandrovna managed uh, uh, with these challenges she stayed focused she stayed within her chosen method assessment of efficiency is difficult is hard uh, she worked uh, 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 where the study of digital policy and public diplomacy merge. And uh, so I think the study has relevance, and I invite you to support this work. Thank you for your reviews, and thank you for attending today's defense. Thank you, Natalia Alexandrovna. Dear colleagues, is anybody else willing, uh, maybe, uh, any, is anyone of the council members willing to speak? Nobody is willing to speak. <coughs> Then, at that, let's uh, stop our discussion. And before we summarize and vote, I have a question for the Decision Council members and the applicant. If Decision Council members have any remarks or questions regarding the procedure of today's session, uh, including those related to remote access mode, Natalia Rivna, Vladimir Ivanovich, no. Olga Vladimirovna, no. Irina Vladimirovna, no. Gregory Simons? No. Thank you. I don't have any questions. And in that case, let's proceed uh, to the next stage, this voting. Dear colleagues, before we vote, we have the opportunity to take a break to discuss the results and the sound shall be turned off. What do you think? Do we need such a break to discuss the results? Natalia Yurivna? No, I don't think we need a break. Yeah, I also think so, dear colleagues. Uh, does, uh, no, no, we, well, we support your decision. Everybody's okay with this. In that case, we won't take a break. Please check that we can make sure that we can all see and hear each other. Yes, Vladimir Ivanovich, Irina Vladimirovna, Olga Vladimirovna. Yes, I can see and hear Greg, Dr. Simons. Can you see? Can you hear us? Good. In that case, I put the question of awarding to Shurizat Alexandrovna the degree of candidate of historical sciences in specialty 567, history of international relations and foreign policy, to open individual vote. Uh, let me emphasize, but by voting for each council member agrees that Article 11 of the order has not been violated. Let me quote this. The thesis has to refer to the author in or source of boring materials or results. When using results of scientific works performed by the applicant 
uh, personally or in co-authorship. The applicant has to mention this circumstance. Let me remind you that a decision of the Station Council on awarding a degree shall be considered positive if at least uh, if more than a half, but not less than three persons of the Council present voted for it. According to Article 17 of the Order on Thesis Defense Council for the a degree of Candidate of Sciences and Doctor of Sciences in Petersburg University, Annex 2 to the order of the 1st of September 2016, 6821-1. Well, Council Member Zelina Varina Vladimirna, your opinion. I am fully for, I support the thesis and I agree with all the answers. Okay, thank you. Irina Vladimirna, Council Member Markushina Natalia Yurivna. I fully support the thesis. Thank you. Council member Fokin Vladimir Ivanovich, your opinion? My opinion has not changed, so I, I vote for avoiding the degree. Thank you. Council member Lebedev Olga Vladimirna, your opinion? I uh, agree with my colleagues and I fully support avoiding the degree. Thank you. Council member Gregory John Simons, your opinion, please? Or. Oh. Thank you. And myself, Chairman of the Council, Panzerev Konstantin Arsenovich, I also I will I also support the work and vote for awarding the degree. Thus, dear colleagues and guests, let me inform you that out of six council members, uh, pr uh, six voted for, no one abstained, and no one voted against. The decision to award to Shur Elizaveta Alexandrovna the degree of Candidate of Historical Sciences, Academic Specialty 567, History of Foreign Relations, International Relations Foreign Policy has been made. Elizaveta Alexandrovna, you have the floor for your closing remarks. Dear Chairman, dear Council Members, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for paying attention to my thesis and for your constructive criticism and positive reviews. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, then all we have to do is congratulate the applicant and wish her all the best. We congratulate you on excellent defense and I declare the session closed. Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, participation. Please stop live broadcasting.